Now, the next part of my talk was to talk about React hooks. And so uh, I'm going to switch over now to a couple of different uh, Visual Studio Code windows. The first one is this adaptive, this is in the, 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 um, the samples repo. This is the adaptive card web part that Hugo has built and demoed a couple times. I look back in the history to see his, his demo of this. And I want to compare and contrast that with the hooks version. And so a couple things that I, I, I want to call out, first of all, is that uh, hooks are optional. You can run those side by side. They run on function components, but they, they work well with class components. And so what I did is just to go through his web part here and, and I've changed it around. So let me bring this one up here. I'm trying to race through this. Obviously, we're not gonna, I'm not gonna cover the whole, the whole thing, right? So we have uh, the two different versions here. I'm not going to do them side by side. That's not going to work with me today. But what I want to point out here, we look real close in here. What we've, what I've done, is the the actual web part that is generated is untouched, basically, right? The SharePoint framework um, creates a class, and that's fine. Hooks are not supported in classes. But if you think through what needs to happen here in general, we just uh, use I, I just use the built-in web part to host uh, a, a functional component. Right, which is the this root component. And then, of course, the, all the work to be done for properties is still as it always was. So that part still works. So I look real close at the root component. This is a functional component here. So React functional component. So it can use hooks, right? And there's a couple of custom hooks that I, I've used. One of them is a card service, which will make a call out to an HTTP endpoint. Use the list data service. So that's basically using the SPJS to read a list. And then there's a couple of built-in ones here to set state. So things that you would expect, I'm going to be setting state for stuff I need to do. And then you can see here we're using uh, the, the, the use effect hook to react when something changes. So again, you can read more about this in links that we'll post. But when I have this dependency of null, that means it's kind of a component did mount. So when it did mount, it'll go through. And what I want to point out here is that it's going to connect to the, the context, right? So this is the SharePoint context that we get as part of our web part. If I go back to my um, top one here, you'll notice that's when I do render, it is passing this dot context into the root component. Right? And so it's available there. I can then pull information out of that. Right? Now, another thing that what this root component is doing is it's importing a, a app context, right? And the idea around this is I can now use an app context when I render and I can provide things that are put on the context are now available to all children and which basically is everything in my web part. Why do I care about this? Because I can now reference things from the context instead of having to pass it down. So the reason I, this becomes interesting to me is because as I drill down into other components, uh, I don't necessarily need to have the passed in as a property, right? There's no properties that are passed in. I just use the context. So this makes sense. I'm just one child down. But if I keep going further down into my adaptive card host, I come into the adaptive card host control. Again, I'm going to then get the context and I don't have to pass in any properties. The properties that I'm passing in are really only things that are going to be directly uh, control the rendering. What I need the context for is because I want to switch when the theme changes, right? So if the SharePoint web part, the SharePoint site theme changes, I may want to react to that, or I want to make an HTTP call in response to a handler on the adaptive card. I don't necessarily have to pass in a property that's not necessarily used. So this is the kind of the idea around using context and using hooks. I want to go back to my viewer web part. There's a couple, there are a bunch of other hooks in here. Scroll down. I know I'm going very fast here. Sorry about that. Not this one. If I go back to the adaptive card viewer, um, oh. I got my myself all confused here. If I go back to adaptive card host component, yeah, all right. So you'll notice here it's it's reacting to uh, is the data loading. I'm going to show a spinner, or I'm going to show the adaptive card. If I look at the adaptive card. What's interesting here, I think, is that if looking at this closely, this is a class component. In fact, it's unchanged from what Hugo had prepared. The, the key point here is I can use hooks and functional components alongside class components. I don't have to change everything. So I was able to, to leave the top level part, the, the original SPFX generated web part as a class and the, the bottom 
if you will, the bottom of the tree, the rendering component is still a class and everything in between is set up to be hooks. And so if you look at both the uh, projects, you'll see there's a lot of services in here. And this is, I've abstracted out a bunch of the, the, the stuff to do HTTP context in here. And there's also a reducer. You can read more about the use reducer uh, hook as well. Um, the, the reducer becomes helpful because as I make change or as the information comes back from, from um, uh, the HD, if, I, if I get my data from HTTP endpoint, this will be reflected in the state. And so when this hooked, when this hook will monitor the state, and when the state changes, it'll cause a re-render. So in this particular example, you can see where I'm just saying, hey, I've got, here's my, my data that came in as a payload, right? When my type is complete, here's the data. I can pass the data in here by using this dispatch method in the, in the reducer, and this will cause a re-render. So the, car, the web part will re-render. So, and you can see there's various hooks on different, different, dependent properties and that I find this becomes less much cleaner to have individual methods that based on changes instead of a big monolithic uh, data rendering ones. If I go back to the old one, you'll notice if I come into the adaptive card host component in here, there's a lot of if statements going through and checking through what's going on. So it's just a, a way to get us a little bit more uh, straightforward uh, code in using the hooks along with the um, the context. So talking about hooks, just to recap, there's some reasons why the React team built them. The, the bottom one there is, is what uh, helps me confuse the, the this, what is this in a particular class, so that doesn't matter because it's a function. And all I've done is refactor to use context and state. And here are a bunch of links, and I'm happy to take any questions that folks have. Excellent. So thank you, Paul.